Secretary of the Council of Student Leaders. I would like to take this opportunity to formally welcome you to, to the 2013 Annual State of the Student Body Address, brought to you by Student Body President Cameron Garvin and the rest of the Council of Student Leaders. Tonight's address will inform you all about the progress and efforts the Council has made this year to try and make the campus a better place for all of its students. Our members have collaborated with other student organizations and each other to bring together an amazing year of events and advancement. From registering voters to resolutions to galas, every one of the council members has brought forth diligence and ingenuity to complete the tasks handed to them. The council members have battled obstacles and hardships in order to further develop with their student body and foster school pride. Tonight is not just about celebrating our triumphs, but also recognizing the need to incorporate the student body into our efforts. It is important that all of you see that without you, we would be nothing. Without a student body, what is a student government? We so appreciate all of the support and participation you have shown the council this year. We encourage you to continue and to inspire others to get involved as well, because your participation is vital to us. The Council of Student Leaders mission statement emphasizes our desire to empower students to become more involved on campus, and tonight is all about empowering students with the knowledge of our efforts. I sincerely encourage all of you to listen carefully tonight and to see our vision for the future with our student body. I hope that after tonight you realize that our purpose is to serve you, the students, and that at any time you feel something at Winthrop needs to be improved, you can bring it to the council. We need your support and participation in order to be a successful student government. 6,000 minds working together will always be more productive than 40. In the famous words of Henry Ford, coming together is the beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. Teamwork is essential to any organization, but what makes the Council of Student Leaders so unique is that we need everyone to work together to have a positive effect in my group. It is my personal hope and the hope of the Council that you understand how important your role and responsibility as a student to further and Winthrop's improvement are. Without your guidance, we cannot succeed. Without your help, we cannot continue. Thank you, and I will now like to turn it over to Student Body Vice President, Christopher Aubrey for the introduction of this year. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Cameron Houston Garvin is a native of Columbia, South Carolina. He is a senior majoring in political science with a minor in sociology and African American studies. Garvin has been a member of the council since the fall of 2009, serving as an NAACP representative. Garvin now holds the distinction as the first selected part elected president at Winthrop in a decade. During his time here at Winthrop University, Garvin has kept himself busy with campus activities. He has volunteered with Project Rebound in the Boys and Girls Club of Rock Hill, is a member of Alpha Delta Lambda Academic Honor Society and Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, and has worked as a peer mentor. Garvin also has acted as a delegate for the National Panel Council and as an Associate Justice for all three council judicial board. Over the years, Garvin has served in numerous leadership positions with civic and community organizations and has been recognized for his outstanding service. His hobbies include traveling, riding, and helping others, especially the less fortunate and the elderly. Garvin's philosophy of life is that of the first president of Ghana, West Africa. Forever, forward ever, backwards never. I now present to you your student body president, Mr. Campbell Houston Garvin. Vice Chair Christopher Aubrey, Secretary Alexandra Jensen, to the other officers, members of the Council, and visiting friends. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. It's been an honor and privilege uh, for me to serve you as the Student Body President and Chair of the Council of Student Leaders for the past two years. It is true, as the fraternal hymn says, college days swiftly pass, imbued with memories fond, and the recollection surely fades away. And indeed, they do. The State of the Student Body Address will be an annual occasion for student government leadership to provide perspective, updates, challenges, opportunities, and threats that face our student body. Educator and author Claude Bissell once suggested that we should care more than others think is wise, risk more than others think is safe, dream more than others think is practical, and expect more than others think is possible. These defining words have shaped my leadership, 
worldview, and philosophy of life. It's been a huge honor and privilege to represent the nearly 6,000 undergraduate and graduate students for the past two years. Serving as the chair of the Council of Student Leaders has given me the rare opportunity to see Winthrop University through a different set of lenses. Whereas I served on the Board of Trustees, the Presidential Search and Selection Committee, in addition to numerous other advisory boards. This role has given me the opportunity to, to be an advocate and to speak out on issues that matter most to those with whom I represent. In this high-profile campus and community role, I have experienced both successful periods as well as moments of difficulty and controversy. However, realizing the, the importance of having both bitter and sweet, I am always humble and grateful for the successes and stronger and wiser from the obstacles and challenges. Rudyard Kipling said it best in its point if, over a century ago, that we must be able to meet with both triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. Through every experience, I've never forgotten the people who put me in position to lead, but most importantly, serve. I've always held close the principle of, and whosoever of you will be the first, shall be serving of all. A trait that is sadly very often lost as individuals climb the ladder of success and forget that the goals are greater than any one individual, but should be about the collective interests of all. Winthrop's motto is veritas cum libertate, meaning truth with liberty. Truth is defined as being a verified or indisputable fact, proposition, principle, or the like. While liberty is defined as a person's freedom from control by fate or necessity. Although historians could probably debate the intentions of President David Bancroft Johnson and the faculty of 1899 when they coined this motto, Allow me to say that it is true as students that we do have the, uh, we must internalize it. Unlike in 1899 when truth and liberty were sometimes challenging to obtain, today it is true that we each have the opportunity to do well and excel academically, free from the constraints of society or others. It is true that we have the freedom to decide our majors, career paths, beliefs, and even relationships. It is true that we have the next great leaders, innovators, theorists, scientists, and educators in this room. As a college student, you also have the liberty to live with people from different backgrounds, even people that hold different beliefs, and attend class with people who you, who you may never agree with. It is also true that the experiences that we gain in college will have a profound effect on who we are and who we become in life. The truth liberates us. And as I have discovered, college is a time where preconceived notions are destroyed, barriers are broken, and people from every walk of life come together and make our university what it is. Winthrop excels as an institution of higher learning, not only because we respect one another, but also because we learn from each other. It's more than just the same, but we truly do live, learn, and lead. Over the past two years, the CSL has been able to accomplish a great deal through our nine standing committees, which include campus safety, campus engagement, sustainability, student empowerment, programming, public relations, political action, student administration liaison, and student allocations. For instance, during the 2012 election cycle, the council notably registered over 1,000 new voters and sponsored three nonpartisan election-related events. We passed a resolution ca uh, cautioning that the voter ID law in South Carolina had the potential to disenfranchise college students, and we took our case to Governor Nikki Haley. We also led a campaign that lobbied our legislators in Columbia to make higher education funding a greater priority for the state. In fostering social awareness, the council co-sponsored a candlelight vigil in honor of the slain 14 Trayvon Martin. 
We also sponsored production that brought attention to sexual awareness and are currently working on a similar project that will bring attention to LGBT related issues. We've also served as a major sponsor of the Winthrop Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service act activities for the past two years. We also initiated the Be Through Safety campaign, which encourages on campus safety by creating a set of mini commercials that can be found on YouTube today. At the conclusion of this year, we would have successfully allocated over $56,000 to campus clubs and organizations. This funding has gone towards student programs, lectures, conferences, and other activities. We've co sponsored Eagle Fest, as well as hosted numerous pep rallies, spirit weeks, and campus wide tailgate activities, all with strength and school spirit. Through our efforts, we have successfully raised the visibility of the council, both on social media and through our professional advertisements. The council has worked, has worked with the administration on a plethora of issues, including providing short-term student parking spots now located outside of the Georgia Campus Center. We further work with the administration on increased activity funding for student organizations. The council passed a resolution that dealt with the proper usage of common time for faculty, staff, and students. And we're currently in the early stages of working with the family of pioneer legislator and former with the professor, the late Dr. Bessie Moody Lawrence, to have the auditorium in Tilton Hall renamed in her honor. CSL has worked on improving landlord tenant relations and provided students with legal counsel to ensure that they know their rights. The council has sponsored three environmental sustainability programs, purchased and distributed reusable grocery bags, and passed a resolution that advocates for both safety and policy related improvements for, uh, to the Newfoundland University smoking policy. Internally, we've updated our mission statement and constitution, created an annual vision statement, hosted four successful retreats, purchased a kiosk that will keep the student body updated on our activities, <laughs> created the student allocation administrator position, added two organization and annual member seats, and chartered over 20 new clubs and organizations. I am proud to report that the state of the student body is strong. From academics to athletics to student life, when the students are taking the lead in making a positive difference, the Council of Student Leaders has established itself as the respected voice of the student body. The accomplishments of CSL over the past two years are the result of hard work, cohesive action, and the dedication of our membership. Please join me in a round of applause to recognize the council members who are present tonight, along with our dedicated advisors, Dean Bethany Marlowe and Dr. Christy Schoenfer. members came together to draft what will become the student body election guidelines. At that time, we had only heard negative comments about student water elections and student apathy and lack of participation, which resulted in the initial termination of student water elections over a decade ago. However, we proved the skeptics wrong in the first student water election garnered an 18% student turnout surpassing most of the colleges and universities, as well as even local elections. This year will be no different. I am excited about the prospect of our third annual student-wide elections and encourage each of you to get engaged with the political process and selecting our new president and vice president for the 2013-2014 academic year. The Winthrop University mascot is an eagle. Eagles have sharp vision and are able to carefully observe things in close proximity and can zoom in on things in the distance. While other birds flap their wings, an eagle has the ability to lock its wings and glide. Therefore, as storms arise, unlike other birds that run and hide, eagles welcome the challenge as it flies directly into the storm allowing the strong winds to push it to higher heights. That should be our philosophy as with the peoples. 
That regardless of the challenges that we may face, as eagles we can conquer them. As we're in this historic transition period, let us remember that the chapel holds our history. Each new day to the rings. Your halls are rich with memories to which we'll always cling. A part of each one here remains as a part of you we claim. Alma mater, may your name be grand. Winthrop, ever stand. The friends we made, the memories, will last a lifetime long. We soar to reach the goals we set as eagles, bold and strong. May others see our loyalty. Ever honored you will be. Alma mater, may your name be grand. Winthrop, ever stand. I am confident that the future of our university is bright and that the best is still yet to come. Thank you for all you do to make Winthrop University great. Thank you. Any questions? Um, any questions and comments from the student bar? Uh, as everybody I'm sure is aware of the fact, we just finished up a Again, a pretty short search for our 10th Winthrop University president. Uh, a lady named Dr. Jane Marie Comstock or Jane Comstock uh, from Butler University. Uh, I want to say that the student perspective was highly sought uh, throughout that entire process, from the, I mean, from the very inception of the process. And when I, when I say that, I really do mean that. We hired, when, we, when we hired a search consultant uh, to do the actual search for us, I was in the room. Where we picked, where we narrowed it down from 100 candidates to 12 candidates, I was in the room. When we interviewed to those 12 candidates and, and then took it down to four candidates, candidates to create a campus, I was in the room making sure that we uh, advocated for the student perspective. So a lot of these things, and a lot of to publicly applaud the Board of Trustees uh, for making sure that the student perspective as well as the faculty perspective is heard and sought uh, throughout that entire process. And I, and I hope and I hope that the other students, you know, that you all enjoyed it as well, from the forums and Thompson to the lunches that we that a few of us have opportunity to go uh, to each of the candidates. I hope that you all appreciated the transparency and the openness and the involvement of the process with students. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Um well, I'm not sure if that's a <laughs> Um, I'm not dying. <laughs> so, so, uh, so I, I'm just saying English. I'm just saying. Um, I, I definitely think that one thing uh, we I went through several things that we've been able to accomplish. You know, I say we. Uh, it was never I did this or I did that. It was always we because I think that in any group you can't possibly do everything by yourself. We had a great team. I think one of the biggest things that. Uh, when you know when we leave, and when in four years from now, this whole room is going to be different. Uh, there are going to be new people in here, um, new students in here. Hopefully, the faculty and staff, I'm sure they'll still be here, but beyond that, student wise, this, this entire room is going to be different. Uh, so, the, the last legacy, you know, I think my Angela put it best people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And I think that's going to be the last legacy that we, live, that we leave behind. And I, I guess it the biggest advice I can give to whoever comes next, he or she, um, to that individual, it, it is to be humble, um, to be, uh, to never get so high in where you disconnect the people who put you in office, uh, to remain visible, to remain present, uh, to don't forget, pretty much to don't forget the bridges that brought you over. Um, and I think that's uh, something that I really did uh, seek to do while, while in office to make sure folks knew that I was their president, to make sure people knew that I was representing their interests and their concerns. Uh, we had open door policy, well, we continue to have open door policy, uh, where you can come by anytime, you can schedule an appointment. You know, I've done countless, um, we call it constituency services, where I've done countless projects and countless, on a countless events and programs. Uh, to, to better assist the people who we represent. So basically the bottom line is to don't forget who you are, don't let titles, don't let positions change you into this office. Um, remember, who put you in office and who you serve. Okay, so that's the question. That's the question that we heard a lot during the presidential search. Where do we want, we want to see with the university in 10, 15, 20 years from now? And I think, you know, in the interim future, I think national prominence is something that we want to see with the you know, really take on. I think Winthrop should be the choice school for students in South Carolina versus a USC or, or a Clemson. 
I think students should want to say they would come to, to, to USC. I'm sorry, to Winthrop versus those other institutions. Uh, and I, I think also, uh, one thing I've heard from students and one thing, one question we posed to the candidates that came to visit our campus uh, for president, for the university president, is football. I think, uh, I know it's a very expensive thing, but I think football should also be something, is also something that would really um, help us in, in attracting students as well. Um, so, but to answer your question, Alex, I think national prominence, uh, taking it to the next level, um, I think we're in a we're pose for greatness. I think what we do, we do good, we do good at what we do, but I think there's always room for improvement, there's always room to do better. So, uh, hopefully in 10 years from now, when we all come back and visit as dudes paying uh, alum who contribute to our alma mater, uh, you know, we plan those seats now. Uh, I think that, you know, <laughs> hopefully we'll see some progress in that respect. Thank you for the question. Well, for the next few months or for the next, well, let's, I'll take that question in two parts. I think uh, we have a couple, let's take start with the next few months first. We have a few, CSLs about we have a few things coming up. For example, tomorrow night we're hosting a, we're hosting a forum with a local attorney that deals with landlord and tenant relations. Uh, it's going to be, the forum's going to be tomorrow night uh, in Owen Street one at 7 p.m. So if you're moving off campus, definitely come out to this forum. Uh, at 7 p.m. so you can know your rights as a student. One of the biggest goals to end this year with will of course be the student-wide election process and getting as many, and you're the election commissioner, Christine, so it's going to be your job and my job and all of our jobs collectively to work on getting uh, the student body engaged uh, in the election process uh, to get our numbers higher than 18% that we had in 2011 to hopefully 25, 30% of, uh, of student turnout. So that's going to be one of the big things that we push over the next few months. Um, thanks for the question, Christian. I appreciate it. I hope I answered it. Thank you. Well, I didn't know it was an issue, so we can talk about it. We can definitely, when we meet with the president, um, we can definitely talk about it. But I just thought about the second part of your question. Uh, I think the goal that we will hopefully see in the next few years, uh, we'll probably, again, all be long gone by that point. I, or at least I hope so. Uh, I hope that we will have a new library event. Um, I know you all have probably thought a lot about the college town action plans and how the university is trying to incorporate itself more with the Rock Hill community. Uh, there are mixed things on that proposal, but you know, either we'll have a lot of library built down in the, gra you know, the gravel lot, the Amish lot down, right down the street, or we'll have a library built, perhaps shared with the city of Rock Hill. Uh, who knows uh, what, what that means in the future, but I think it's, and, and for those who don't know, what, what I'm talking about is, is the College Town Action Plan. And the idea behind it is moving Winthrop from just being an insular, gated community to being a, um, a college town. So to basically open the borders of the campus, to, to basically open Rock Hill to Winthrop and Winthrop to Rock Hill. Probably answer more of why it's being done. And again, to, to open the, the borders of, of the university uh, and then the community. Uh, for the past 126, 127 years that we've been an institution, um, we've been a data community. You know, I was talking to a Winthrop alumni from before 1940s, 1950s, and she said she came to campus and she was fascinated by the fact that the courtyard had to go across the street from campus. And she said that when she was here, the young ladies weren't permitted to even cross over the, the, the railroad tracks. But she was just fascinated by the fact that we. Um, how, how we've grown. So, long story short, Eric, it, it is, uh, the point is to make the university more open, more inclusive. Uh, it's still to be determined whether or not, um, I know, again, I know there are mixed opinions on that, but we'll see uh, how it pans out over the next few years. By the time the Board of Trustees, as well as the current administration, and I'm sure the future administration, uh, are, are, are in full support of, uh, I mean, I mean on the presidential level, not, not us, but our full, full support of the proposals. I met with uh, Ms. Kimberly Kills, who serves as the Vice President of University Advancement just last week, and we scheduled a meeting with uh, Dr. Moody Lawrence's daughters. Uh, we probably, and her daughter is a, a local attorney named Liam Moody. And um, we're going to go, we're still working on calendar the days to get together. Uh, to schedule a time to meet with the family, to really see what the family's desires are. Um, the question is, you know, does the family want to an auditorium to be named in her honor, or they want a different space on campus? Um, one thing that I found to be very encouraging in my conversations with Ms. Kimberly Hill, uh, this, 
this past week was that she said, you know, although, you know, very often the university has a naming policy. And typically, when you find somebody who has something that's named after them, they've either been a major financial contributor or obviously a contributor of some sort. Uh, and one thing that I got out of that meeting with the skills is that contributions come in a variety of form, in a, a different, you know, variety of shapes and sizes. Uh, so that was very promising in that uh, regards as well. But that's a good point, Victor. I, I know one thing, to Christine's earlier question, that's one thing that we're going to really push all over the next few months to really get that auditorium renamed. And for those who aren't very familiar with it, does anybody know, does anybody not know that the history of Tillman, Benjamin Tillman, the governor, former governor of South Carolina, anybody not know? Okay, nobody's raising their hand. I'm going to tell you anyways. Benjamin Tillman was a former governor of South Carolina, former U.S. Senator, a very uh, influential guy in South Carolina and national politics, a very prominent figure. So, but all he did a lot of great things. He was also racist as well as a sexist. Uh, so, Dr. Bessie Moody Lawrence uh, exemplifies. She was a former Winthrop University professor who, who passed away back in December. But she exemplifies, you know, everything that Benjamin Tillman stood against. And I think that would be a, a, a great way. You smile at it. I must put it well. Uh, I think that would be a great way uh, to honor her legacy in the historic Tillman building. I know in years past, you know, SGA, when we had, when we had an SGA, Student Government Association, I know I've talked to folks who've tried to get, you know, most people don't realize that for, you know, up until the late 1999, 2000, we didn't even recognize the MOK Day here in Winthrop. You know, the students got that changed. So I think anytime there's major, you know, social change or major progress on campus, students are definitely pushing it and making it happen. So thanks for the question. Let me tell you, um, from what I've learned over the past few years, Winthrop was, uh, classroom-wise, Winthrop was equipped uh, for expansion. Um, you know, there's space. Um, and, I, and, you know, again, being that we're getting ready to enter a new administration with a new president for the first time in a quarter of a century, um, we're going to see what her goals are. I, I want to say in, in our meeting uh, with Dr. Comstock, she's mentioned the male to female ratio. Does that, does that sound familiar? She mentioned the male to female ratio uh, for Winthrop. And, you know, that's something that she's going to look at. I think Winthrop is 65% female, about, what, 30% guys, you know, guys, something like that, 35% guys. Uh, and I know a lot of guys in the room might not want to hear that, but they are, they are looking at equalizing, perhaps, um, who's suggesting perhaps, to look at gender, um, you know, but it's very true that Winthrop, uh, I think we're posed, we are posed for expansion over the next few years. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's been fun. The, a, lot, a lot of you are saying that it's definitely been fun, but I think that you have to definitely, thanks for the question, I think that you have to definitely be able to walk and, and chew chew them at the same time. So, um, the most hours I've taken since I've been president, I've spent about 16, 17 hours. So, this is my have 13 hours swimming, martial arts, um, <laughs> Ireland, you know, I'm just kind of cruising on now. <laughs> um, but, you know, it definitely has been um, an, an amazing opportunity to be able to balance, to have to balance, um, you know, these things. But that's just the real world for you, you know, when a few years from now, believe it or not, uh, some of us are going to be married, we're going to have kids, we're going to have jobs, um, and you know, so that's scary, right? Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> so, but you're going to have to be able to balance a lot of different things, and I think it's kind of prepared me, uh, you know, for that uh, challenge. Absolutely, and that's a, a kind of misconception that we have around the campus. CSL meetings are open to anybody to come on Monday, so Ian, kind of give me a free one. I think for that one. But yeah, definitely come out to our meetings on Monday. We meet in Dix 114, just like you're here tonight. You'll learn so much from being in those meetings. Okay?